During this demonstration, we will create a basic realistic user scenario in which multiple virtual users enter a website and navigate the site. We will do this by sending a multiple HTTP request to a web page. We will then send a second HTTP request to another page. We will also use the cookie manager and the cache manager so that we can configure JMeter to behave like a real browser. We will also clear our cache and cookies with each iteration to imitate the behavior of multiple users entering the website. At the end of this demo, we will also run the test and view results for multiple users, noting the maximum response times. Now, to begin with, my JMeter is already launched. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save my test plan within the JMeter scripts that I had created before. And I'm going to name my test plan as JMeter. Right, and I'm going to go ahead and save it off. Now let's go ahead and first add a thread group to our test plan. And I'm going to enter the number of threads as 10 and the ramp up period to 60. The ramp up period basically tells you for how long it will take for all of the threads to start running. And in this current example, the last thread will start running at 60 seconds. Now let's also add an HTTP cache manager to the test plan. So let's go back to the test plan, get into add config element, HTTP cache manager. Let's enable clear cache uh, each iteration. And now also add uh, an HTTP cookie manager into this test plan. Right. And uh, for this as well, we're going to go ahead and clear cookies each iteration and accept all the other settings as default. Uh, note that adding a cache manager and a cookie manager to the test plan allows you to better stimulate real internet browser behavior. Now let's go ahead and add an HTTP request into this test plan. And I'm going to go ahead and add the server name as placedemo.com. Uh, the protocol will be uh, HTTP by default, and I'm going to leave the rest of the settings as default. And I'm going to go ahead and add a view results tree listeners tab. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and add an HTTP request and configure a constant timer on it. So let me go back into my thread group. Uh, note that when the fields of the HTTP request configuration pane are left blank, uh, the HTTP request default values are automatically applied. Uh, for example, the HTTP request will use the server name blazedemo.com uh, provided in the server name field of the HTTP request details uh, configuration pane. Now, let's go ahead and right click the HTTP request and add a constant timer to it. Now, I'm going to set the thread delay field to it now. And I'm going to set the thread delay to about uh, 10,000. Let's go back to our HTTP request advanced settings. And I'm going to check retrieve all embedded resources as well as parallel downloads. And I'm going to set the number to 2. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're also going to go ahead and execute another HTTP request, which will wait for about three seconds before executing. And the delay will occur before the previous request is sent out by the JMeter. Let's go back to our thread group and let's add our HTTP request in. Go back to the basic tab 
and I'm going to set the seven name to place demo one more time and leave the rest of the stuff uh, as default. In the path, I am going to go ahead and enter uh, maybe reserve.php and I'm going to right click this and add a constant timer to it as well. And the thread delay for this is going to be about 3000. And this would apply a wait time of uh, three seconds to this HTTP request. Let's go ahead and save all of this now. The last thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and look at our view results tree and look at the results of each of our requests that we've created here. So let's go into your view results tree and go ahead and run the test. Right, so let's uh, go and look at our first HTTP request. Note that each thread executes two HTTP requests here. And you should be able to see the results for a total of 20 HTTP requests when the test completes. Let's select the first HTTP request to view its test results. And I'm going to go into the request tab. You can see your get request in the URL here. And in the response data, you should be able to see the actual response. What you will also be able to see is the maximum response time, uh, which is also known as the load time. And you can also manually check the load time for each HTTP request to discover the maximum load time for a request. And you can also add an additional listener to capture this information if you would like to. Now let's go back and uh, do one more exercise. We're going to add a response time listener to generate an aggregate report on the response time. So I'm going to go back into my test plan for that and add in a listener. And the listener is going to be called aggregate report. I'm going to save this with the default settings. I'm going to go back into aggregate report and then go ahead and run the test. Now, as the data starts to appear in the aggregate report, uh, you may note that the maximum response time in milliseconds in the max column of the report is displayed. And a lot of other information around the response time also appears in this report. All right, so this completes uh, this demonstration. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.